Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Expedition, and I have some wonderful news. Some of you may already know this if you are playing along with me and you've downloaded the mod pack, but mod pack has gotten an update. We are now in version 1.1.0, and a couple changes have been made, nothing too major. Uh, I added a backup mod because it would. Be, I want to make sure that if something ever happens, uh, I have a backup of my worlds, and then I also added uh, Chisel Tones. One of you had mentioned in the comments that that was, uh, one of you said something along the lines of, why no Chisel Tones? And I thought about it, and I was like, you know what, that would be a really good idea. I should probably have that. So I added that in, and then I also added Recurrent Complex, and that's one that I'm really excited about, and I think you're really going to like. Um, but today's episode, I want to start off by making something that I kind of want to have and have needed for a while, I'm going to make a flux capacitor. And basically what this is, is a mobile battery. And tell me I'm not out of lead. Am I out of lead? No way. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, I know I've got more lead than that. So the way that we make that is with a little bit of lead like this. There we go. And then we take the leadstone and we can turn it into a harden by using some invar and tin. It, it, maybe it won't work because I'm guessing it won't work because it's the, not a stackable item. There we go. Okay. And then we can do the same thing with electrum and a diamond, and that will give us this redstone flux capacitor. And that thing will hold 4 million RF. That's a lot of RF. Uh, but the reason that we want that is because our primary tool right now is this atomic disassembler. And if that thing runs out of power, since I'm using it as my tool and my weapon, I'll pretty much be out of luck. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let this thing charge for a while. It's got to get to 4 million RF, so it's going to take a bit. Uh, but I'll let that charge for a while. I think I'm also going to do a little bit of work in agricraft and maybe try and breed some new crops. Uh, but I'm going to work on that, and then I'll come back to you. All right, guys, I am back, and I've been making some progress. I now have a nice field here of soybeans as well, and these are all 10 10 10s. I've been breeding them. That flux capacitor has still not fully charged. It's pretty close. It's almost done. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to go ahead and harvest all of this stuff, and we're going to do... Uh, rather than putting the wheat into the toast machine, since I have, I don't know exactly how much toast, but it's a lot of toast. Uh, since I've got a lot of toast, I'm actually going to take the wheat, and I'm going to put the wheat in the compost bins over here. Now, the reason that I want to do that is to make compost, which I'm going to need. I'll just take this stuff with you so I can show you. Uh, I'm going to need the compost to make garden soil from the garden stuff mod and we're going to need that for a few different things to make it all you do is take some dirt combine it with the compost and that will make garden soil now the reason we need that is because if we look at garden soil if i can find it here it is that's going to be used as the soil for pretty much all of the flowers and that's your regular stuff like poppies and daisies. And then also, more importantly, your flowers from Botania. And that's where it's going to be really important that we have that garden soil. Because I do want to get into Botania relatively soon. Probably not in this episode, but maybe in the next one I want to get some basic stuff going. Uh, but I would think that our capacitor should be done by now. Yes, it is. Good, good, good. So let's go ahead and get ready to head out and see if we can find any of these recurrent complex structures that have been added. Now what's really cool about the recurrent complex mod is it not only comes with a bunch of structures, which to be honest are pretty much perfect for this mod pack because the structures that are in the mod at least most of them. There was a couple of them that I disabled. Uh, but the vast majority of them are really just kind of out there and add 
I guess, ambience would be the best way to say it, to your world. So you really kind of feel like the world is alive and that there's other people living here beyond your standard run-of-the-mill Minecraft villages and, uh, you know, occasionally you'll come across a dungeon and stuff like that. We'll see once we get out into some unexplored chunks, which, thankfully... We really don't have to travel that far. If we head this way, we'll find a whole area of the world that we haven't explored yet. So I'm going to head off that way for a little while, guys, and I'll be back with you in just a little while. All right, guys, I am back. One thing I forgot. Someone told me in the comments that you can right-click these berry bushes, and the bush will stay intact, but you still get the berry, and then it will grow back. And I totally didn't know that. That's pretty cool, because it's kind of a nifty little food source. You eat them really fast. So... Thank you for letting me know about that. Anyway, I'm going to keep traveling. I'll be back in a while. All right, guys, I am back. And this right here, this beacon, is actually a beacon that I built and added into the mod pack. And you'll find these scattered throughout the world. Uh, this one is relatively common. There's a, uh, I believe I added in this update five different structures that I built along with the ones that actually come with Recurrent Complex. But the plan is every time I do an update to the mod pack, I'm going to add in some new structures for you to find. And that way, there's also kind of an incentive to go out and explore even more and, and to not stop exploring. So this is a beacon. Uh, it doesn't really do anything. It just kind of sits here and looks pretty. But that is one example of a structure that I've added. So I'm going to keep looking for stuff, guys, and I'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, I am back, and I just caught a glimpse of something. Yeah, there's a house right over there. And if I know that architectural style, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's probably one of the houses that I built as well. Let's take a look at it over here. So you'll find these out in the world. Sometimes Some of them will be uh, more common than others. But here we have just a little house. This one kind of generated a little derpy, but that's okay. And it comes in here with the bed. You'll find a chest with just some just some food in it, nothing too fancy. And you'll find some coal in the furnaces, so we can cook that stuff up if we want. And uh, then we'll be able to set off on our way again. And that's what I did with a lot of these structures. And I, it, I didn't really want uh, all of them to serve a, a purpose as far as where you'll find lots of great treasure and stuff like that. I wanted a lot of them to just be kind of kind of ambient, just add to the world and make it a little prettier, stuff like that. So that's what these ones do. Um, but I'm going to keep looking for stuff, guys. I'll be back in a little while. All right, guys, I am back. And I stumbled across another roguelike dungeon, and I really kind of want to take a peek. Um, I don't have a whole lot of torches, but if I get a little bit lucky... I might be able to find a relatively decent number of them uh, down here in the cave. So let's kind of pop on down and let's just see if maybe we can find ourselves some goodies. Let me do some exploring of this roguelike dungeon, guys. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, I am back. And I'll tell you what, if there is a second, a second uh, basement level to this dungeon, I'm sure having a hard time finding it. I have looked and looked, and there's a random redstone block. I found the second level to the dungeon. Okay. Um, can I get down there without getting hurt severely in the process? This looks promising. Okay. I'm gonna call that one a win. Awesome. Alright, well, never mind, guys. I found the second level of the dungeon. I'm gonna keep looking. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, we are heading down into dungeon level three, and this is where we'll start to see some decent stuff if we can survive, anyway. If we can stay alive long enough, this is where we'll find the goodies. Um, so the big thing is, first and foremost, I want to light pretty much everything up that I possibly can. Light, 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 light. Just lights everywhere. More lights. Okay. There we go. And then we can start peeking into some of these chests. Shiny, shiny sickle, that's pretty good. We've got... an angry zombie... that wants to kill me. 
Another angry zombie that wants to kill me. A couple diamonds. A uh, splash potion of healing that might come in handy. And this is a creeper. And that means that that is a trapped chest. So we will want to break this chest if we want to get the goodies inside of it. And it looks like there were definitely some goodies inside of it. We'll sort it out all in a sec once I'm safe. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh! Oh, please let me live! Oh! Oh, thank goodness for good armor. Or I would be very dead right there. Holy cats! All right, guys, I am back, and I just found something awesome. We got ourselves a magnanimous pick, and that is a pretty high-end pickaxe. That should mine just about anything, and look at that. We just found ourselves a beacon as well. That is awesome. I don't think I've checked this chest yet, but there really doesn't seem to be anything all that amazing in there. Okay. So, we're finding a few good things. I'm tempted to go down one more level. We got some pretty good food. Uh, we've got... Mm, let's get rid of these. Those will set off traps that will basically kill me. Uh, let's also try and get the torches. Go away, Chupacabra. Now's not a good time. Oh, boy. And you go away, too. Okay. Are we good? I think we're good. Let's check these chests as well. Eye of Ender, always good. Um, I suppose I could use the iron horse armor. In here we've got steel chest plate, more super food. And I think that's basically it for this room. And then in this we've got another shiny sickle. We've got peanut seeds, that's good. Those are gonna come in handy for making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And I think that is pretty much it for this level, guys. So let me see if I can find the staircase to get down to the next level. And I'll be back in just a sec. All right, guys, we have made it back home. Let's take a look and see what loot we got. We got all sorts of good stuff. So we got a couple of enchanted books, nothing too major there. We got this chainmail helmet, which I kept because of the enchantments on it. It has Unbreaking 3 and Protection 3, so I'm going to try and yank those enchantments off later on. A um, couple other minor things, nothing major there. Then in this bag, this is where we get some good stuff. We got two beacons. We got another culinary generator. Five diamonds. Two shiny sickles, which is pretty good. A couple of blizz rods. We got an instant farm block, an instant mining ladder block, and an instant statue block. We got a whole bunch of super food. We got some ender pearls, and we got a diamond helmet and a diamond shovel. So, uh, and some other minor things as well. But, oh, and more, most importantly, probably the magnanimous pick. So basically what this is, this is from magnanimous tools. I don't think I've actually found any of the magnanimous tools yet. But there are several magnanimous tools. There are There's a pick, there's a hammer, just like the hammer from Tinkers, and then there's a, it's called an earth mover, which is essentially like the excavator from Tinkers. It can mine in a 3x3 three three area. Um, and what's cool about the magnanimous, is, the magnanimous tools is that they mine faster based on how much experience you have. So right now... Uh, let me actually grab the the pick here. There we go. So right now, I'm sitting on 38 levels, which is pretty good. So if I hover my mouse over, you can see it says, goes 1.5 times faster and has a level 1 drop bonus, right? Now, on the other hand, if I put all of my experience into this experience obelisk, now it just goes regular speed and has no drop bonus and if I take all 48 levels out now we're talking a even better drop bonus and an, or an even better mining speed so kind of a cool little mechanic basically the more experience you have the better those tools are and the hammer and the excavator thing are both pretty nifty but I'm gonna get all this stuff put away and then there's just one more thing I want to do before we draw this episode to a close so let me get some of that stuff ready to go guys and I'll be back in just a sec. 
All right, guys, I am back, and I think I've got pretty much everything here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make myself a Yetta wrench from Ender.io, and that's basically a basic gear, which is just cobble and sticks, and then three electrical steel, and that will make the Yetta wrench, which is basically going to be used to configure these Ender.io conduits, and it just makes it a lot easier to kind of move the interfaces around the way you want. The next thing I'm going to want to do is make three pressers from Pam's Harvest Craft. And we'll do that just like so. It's just a couple pistons and some iron ingots. And then we got to figure out where we're actually going to put these things. Since this is only a temporary base, I'm thinking right about here or so. This looks like a good spot. Let's go ahead and just hollow out that area and we might actually need some space down here although I do have my painting machine so I suppose if needed I can always hide this stuff and conceal it easily enough so there we go and then we'll put these back like that and let's put down our presser so we want one to, oh, that's a new texture. I think. Yeah, that's a new texture. I haven't seen that before. Cool. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, and then what we're going to do is hook up the pressers like so. And like so. Okay. Now. I need that connection to go away. I need these connections to go away. Same with the ones on the side. I wonder if that means that the Pam stuff... I think I may have actually read somewhere that the Pam stuff now uh, outputs from more than just one side. And that would be pretty cool. That would make this a lot easier on me, for sure. But I'll just do it this way instead, just in case. So let's see. Extract. We want this always active. Oh, not never active. Always active. There we go. So it will always extract the stuff that's coming out. And that's what we want. Then... Uh, let's see. I think I want to make some conduit facades. Um, do I have any lying around? I don't see any, but that's okay. Let's just make, uh, let's just make a few more. There we go. Eight should be plenty. And we'll put you in and put you in. And these will start turning into the facades that I need. While we're waiting on that, we can set up the rest of this stuff. So, um, I need you. Come, come to, come to me. You go there. And you go there. And I think that should be good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So then we're going to put a chest here and a chest here. This one will be extract, always. And then... Uh, you know what? I'm gonna have to tear this one up, because this needs to be insert. There we go. Now, all should work fairly well. I hope you guys have figured out what I'm doing here already, because that means that you, uh, either know about modern Minecraft, or I would like to think that you've actually learned a thing or two from watching me, but you never know. Either way. This should do. Now, what we're going to basically do here is... Oh. Uh, no. No. Go away. There we go. What we're basically going to do here is change all of these to insert. So we're essentially making an assembly line. And the reason we're doing that is because the pressers are used for soybeans. And turning soybeans into tofu and tofu 
is basically a replacement for every kind of meat. So if you look at tofu, the firm stuff, it can be used in all sorts of crazy recipes. There's like 75 different recipes, epic bacon. There's just, just tons of different things. Ooh. Actually, epic bacon is not that hard to make because once we get into Botania, hmm. I digress. Sorry. Got distracted there. But anyway, so what's happening is these soybeans are being pulled out of this chest and put into the presser. The presser then turns it into this stuff, silken tofu, which, that's insert. What did I mess up? I messed something up. Oh. No. What did I do? I don't know. Um. Let's see. Hmm. Whatever. I'll just put it back. And we will undo that. Always active. There we go. Now it's working. Maybe I had it set to never active or something. Either way, doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll put you back. And you guys go there. There we go. So then this will take this soy milk and press it into tofu. Or at least it is supposed to. I don't know why it's not working. Did something change? Hmm. Hmm, that's weird. I wonder if Pam's Harvest Craft updated and something changed since when I tested this. I'll have to look into that between episodes, or if you guys know, by all means, fill me in, because I'm just as curious as you are at this point. But guys, that is going to do it for me. If you enjoyed this video, wait a minute, why are we going... Oh, I, I see, I, I see what the problem is. That's supposed to be soy milk. Or, it, does it not? Hmm? It used to go soybean to soy milk, soy milk to silken tofu, silken tofu to firm tofu. And it looks like that has changed to where, hmm, interesting. I'll have to look into that. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I do appreciate it, and it really helps out my channel. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. There are links in the video description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll definitely see you next time.